All right, everybody. Good morning. We are back at it. We are at it once again with these rookies, and we are now moving on to a guy that I didn't look at before the draft. This was my one miss in this Seahawks draft class. I just didn't look at him, didn't think about him. I knew he existed, but he wasn't really on my radar. He wasn't on the aggregate big board until very late in the process. And I did interior offensive linemen early. I actually did it before free agency. So he just slipped through my fingers. And it's too bad that that happened. I think that's something that I completely avoided last year. So every now and then stuff happens. Nevertheless, now that we have him, I've had the opportunity to take a little bit of a deeper look at Sataoa Lomia of Utah. And I got some things to say. I got some things that I think I got some things to uh, discuss with him. So we're talking about a sixth round pick here, the first of our three sixth round picks. And this is probably the one that is most likely going to make a non-trivial NFL impact. I think that Lomia could be a capable player in the NFL. I think that the expectation is that he at least becomes a capable backup. So I don't view this the same way I view some sixth round picks. Sometimes we make a sixth round pick and I just look at the player and I go, I, I can't imagine this guy even making a 53-man roster this year. So Lomia, I'm pretty sure you'd rather have him than somebody like Tremaine Ancrum Jr. So I think he'll at least make the team. I don't know if he'll be a starter year one, but something's going to happen here where he has a relevant role. So. The position that I put him at for the purpose of this video is right guard, but realistically, we don't totally know what the plan is. When he was at Utah, he played right guard for the first few years, and then the last two years he moved to right tackle. Now, I'm just going to say it right now. I don't want this guy playing right tackle in the NFL. I don't think he did it that well in college. He's a guard. He's meant to play guard. He's meant to play on the inside. So the question becomes, do you want him to be your right guard? Do you want him to be your left guard or do you want him to be your center? Some people think he moves to left guard. Uh, I haven't heard very much about him maybe moving to center, although I do think that would help mitigate his uh, arm length, which is middling at best, not even really middling for guards. So <coughs> if Lomia ends up sliding over to the left side or center or, or, or the center spot, it wouldn't shock me too much. So, to be determined on the position. But uh, he did go to Utah. He's 23 years old. Going to be 23 when the season starts. Measurements were 6 foot 4 and a quarter, which is 60, 59th percentile. So, he's a little taller than an average guard. 319 pounds, which is heavier than the average guard, which makes sense if he's going to play on the right side. 69th percentile. 32 and 7 eighth inch arms, which is 29th percentile. So even for a guard, it's it's okay, but it's below average, which is why I do wonder if maybe he'll end up sliding over to center at some point. But for now, I'm going to move forward assuming that he does play guard because with that arm length, I really don't think he's going to be able to play tackle. Um, average hands, 9 and 7 eighth inch hands. His testing was not very expansive for starters. 26 inch vert, below average for a guard. 8 foot 8 inch broad is above average for a guard. And his bench press reps were about average, uh, 26. So there's nothing too remarkable about him physically or as an athlete. So those are the measurables. Those are the testing scores. Let's take a look at his performance at Utah over the last five years. Now, 2019, there's basically nothing. He played two snaps in one game, both of them at right guard, both of them run blocking reps. I think it was at the end of a blowout or something. One zone, one gap. Uh, doesn't really mean anything. So let's just skip through 2019. 2020, that was the COVID year. He played in five games. I think he played in all the games that Utah actually played. So he did what he could. 360 snaps, so he got a pretty good run. Uh, allowed two quarterback hits and 11 hurries, which is not great for a right guard uh, in only five games. Like, that's uh, troublesome. And it committed one penalty. Um... 166 run block reps, 194 pass block reps. Almost all of his run block reps were zone. So his experience is with zone. Zone blocking schemes, uh, playing in space, playing on the move, blocking to an area rather than to an individual player. 
that seems to be what Utah was doing primarily. So that's uh, let, let's keep that in mind as we go forward here. Graded out okay. His overall grade was 59.9, 52.3 pass block, which is, I don't know if it's bad, but it's certainly, it's, it's below average. 60 run block is okay. And Utah's offense was a little above average this year. 51st, 30.2 points per game. Uh, 2021, his first full year as a collegiate player for Utah. And uh, 13 games, so he played in every game Utah played. 903 snaps, so we got a good look at him. Again, he's playing every snap at right guard. And we definitely saw some needed improvement in some key areas. Like his pass protection numbers for his quarterback. Technically it went up, but he played way more. 15 hurries, 6 hits, 1 sack. That's 22 QB pressures in 903 snaps. So his rate of allowing pressure went way down, even though his number of pressures, of course, went up because he played more. It's still not really good, though. If you're playing right guard, you got to be cleaner than this. And he also had six penalties, which is about one every two games. Not great. Um, run blocking, 467 snaps. Pass blocking, 436 snaps. So you can see that Utah's a little more run heavy than the average team, which is what you would expect. This was one of the years they had a... Uh, they had Tavion Thomas, the really big running back. They had Cam Rising, I think, this year. And, um, yeah, they, they were a run-heavy team, and they, they were a zone-heavy team. 292 snaps in zone, 140 in gap. So, primarily, they run the ball with zone-based schemes. And that is where Lomia is building experience. Graded out, better. Uh, 68.2. Run block rate was real good, 72 Pass block grade is still not really where it needs to be. It's getting better, but it's a gradual process. Um, Utah's offense was actually elite this year, by the way. 14th in the country, 36.1 points a game. So they were doing something right as a unit. But uh, Lomia starting to head in the right direction as a player, for sure. Uh, 2022 was a year Utah actually played uh, in the Pac-12 title game and also um, a big bowl game against Utah. Ohio State. So Lomia got a lot of work this year. 14 games, almost 950 snaps, allowed four sacks, one hit, and 27 hurries. So oof. And if you take a look, you can kind of see why this may have happened. Like things got much worse. He allowed over two QB pressures a game. That's significantly worse than 2021. And you might be wondering how that happened. He played the whole season at right tackle. He moved out to right tackle. He played 928 of his snaps on the right tackle side, or right tackle position, and only 19 at right guard. So when you do something like that, you probably are going to struggle mightily as a pass blocker because you're meant to be playing guard. When you're playing guard, you don't have to worry about protecting your edges as much. You don't have to worry about speed rushers. And then you're playing a right tackle, and suddenly it's like, oh, Oh, I, I got to deal with uh, some of the deadliest pass rushers in the country all of a sudden. So, kind of understandable. Uh, also committed five penalties this year, by the way. So, he honestly kind of regressed, which is too bad, because if you had left him at right guard, he probably wouldn't have. And we probably would have gotten a better idea of what he was going to be. Now, that's part of the reason why he's available in the sixth round. So, if he ends up playing at right guard his whole career, maybe he ends up being a higher pick and we don't get him, so don't get me wrong, I, I understand that dichotomy, but yeah, th this wasn't good for him. 440 run block snaps, 508 pass block snaps, so pretty balanced. Again, most of his run blocking is zone, 286, 133 in gap. Uh, graded out pretty poorly, dropped off significantly. 57.6 overall, really bad pass blocking grade, and his run blocking grade fell off too. Now, Utah's offense was still elite, almost 39 points a game, 11th in the country. So the machine was still working, but Lomia regressed. And it's not hard to draw a correlation here. Like, this, this is pretty run-of-the-mill stuff. When you ask a player to move positions like this, you get this sometimes. <coughs> um... 2023, once again, he plays basically his whole season at right tackle. So they didn't move him back. They kept him out there. And to his credit, he did improve. 
but he also clearly showed to me that him playing right tackle is not something that I would like to see at the NFL level. 12 games, a little over 800 snaps, 5 QB hits allowed, 24 hurries. So again, he's allowing more than 2 pressures a game. Uh, he didn't allow any sacks this year at least, but it's still not good. 4 penalties. You can see that he did play 5 snaps over on the left side, but it doesn't mean anything. Um, the meaningful snaps he played were all on the right side. Um, mostly um, even on the run block, pass block share. Utah balanced. Run the ball 400 15 times, pass blocking 388 times. Um, you can see that the zone block, gap block uh, split is still really favored to the zone side. They Utah likes to zone run, and uh, that is the system that Lomia grew up in. He graded out better. Pass blocking is still not good. Run blocking improves a decent amount, gets up to a passable level, and his overall grade's okay, I guess. A little above average. And uh, Utah's offense was not good. They fell off a cliff. 23.2 points per game, barely in the top 100 in the country. So read into that as you will. But um, yeah, we kind of have arrested development here a little bit, I guess you could say. This guy was probably going to be a coveted right guard prospect going into this draft, but hard to be coveted as a right t guard when you're playing right tackle for the last two years. Now... I appreciate him building experience out there in an uncomfortable and unfamiliar situation. But something tells me we'd all be much better off if he had gotten the opportunity to just play right guard the last two years and really developed those skills and really been able to hammer that stuff in. Uh, his totals as a player for his career, 45 games played in, over 3,000 snaps. Five sacks allowed, 14 hits allowed, 77 hurries allowed. So he's a little bit of a sieve in pass blocking. And in fairness, that even goes back to when he was an, a right guard. Although I would point out that it was getting better and probably would have gotten a lot better over the last couple years if he had been given that opportunity. Also committed 16 penalties. That's like one every three games. Decent, okay. Um, so you got the five snaps he played on the left side. You've got almost 1,300 right guard snaps. You've got a little over 1,700 right tackle snaps. So um, you, he's got a lot of reps at both spots, I guess. But I would have preferred things go a different way here. And I think he would have too. Uh, 1,500 run block snaps, 1,500 pass block snaps, almost even. One of the rare uh, college offenses that is pretty well distributed, distributed with their run to pass. And almost a thousand of his snaps in zone, a little over four hundred in gap, and that's uh, that's uh, Satooa Lomia by the numbers. That's what I got for Lomia. Um, it's not going to be anything that really impresses people, right? You're not going to look at these numbers and go, "Oh yeah, this is a guy that I really, really like. This is a guy that I really, really want to be playing for me." But uh, I think context does uh, shed a lot of light into why things went the way they did. All right, more coming soon on Lomia, but that's what I have for him by the numbers. See you guys soon. Go Hawks.